Hello student, this is Dhanjit Deka and you are watching me on my YouTube channel Reaction Concept. Student, in the previous classes I have already covered the concentrations of solutions. There are different concentration units for a solution. Those things are already discussed in the previous classes. So in this video, I will talk about the vapor pressures of a solution and the Rouse law regarding the vapor pressure of a solution. So if we consider the vapor pressure of a solution, let us see what is vapor pressure of a solution. Suppose you have a liquid substance. At a certain temperature, this liquid substance will undergo vapor state okay it will evaporate at a certain temperature suppose at t temperature at the temperature a stage will attain in which this vapor molecule will start it to come back to the liquid state also so at a stage there will be an equilibrium between the these two processes the process first one is known as evaporation evaporation and the process in which vapor molecule going into the solution state or liquid state is called condensation process okay these two processes become equal that is rate of these two processes become equal at a certain level also you should know that the vapor molecule on the surface of liquid will exert some pressures okay this vapor molecule exert some pressures and this pressure at an equilibrium state is known as vapor pressure so if we try to define the vapor pressure it is the amount of pressure it is the amount of pressure exerted by exerted by vapor molecules on surface of liquid solution at equilibrium at a certain specific temperature so this is the definition of vapor pressure so what is vapor pressure we have discussed a vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by the vapor molecules on the surfaces of so liquid solution at the equilibrium stage okay so there are different factors that affects the vapor pressure of a solution you see if we consider a solution, the inter if the intermolecular force of inter attraction between the liquid molecules is weaker, then this molecule will tend to go into the vapor state. As this liquid molecule easily can go to the vapor state, their vapor pressure will be more. Okay, so one factor is intra intermolecular attraction so weaker is the intermolecular attraction greater is the greater is the prepared pressure If again you see if we increases the temperature of a substance okay if we increases the temperature of a substance then we already know that if we increases temperature of any substance then the kinetic energy of the substances will also increases this result into increase of temperature increase of vapor pressure so temperature when we increase temperature vapor pressure also increases these are the two factors that affects the vapor pressure of a 
solution. Now we'll discuss about vapor pressure of different solutions. Okay. First, the first number one solution is liquid liquid solution and other solution is gas liquid solution. These two type of solution we will consider here. Okay, only these two type of consider. Here you see liquid liquid solution, both the solution, both the solute and solvent are in liquid state. Or in this case, here solute is in gas state and the solvent is in liquid state these two things you should consider now let us consider the first one in both these cases we will discuss a law for vapor pressure that is Raoult's law we will see this one what is Raoult's law now let us consider the first one that is liquid liquid solution first you consider two li liquid solution liquid A and liquid B. Both these liquids are in pure state. Okay. And provided that both these liquids are volatile liquid. Volatile liquid means this liquid can undergo evaporation. That this means that the liquid solution of A can undergo in the vapor state at a certain temperature. The liquid of B can also undergo vapor state. So it will exert some vapor pressure when equilibrium is established. Okay. Suppose this vapor pressure is A naught and P B naught. These are the vapor pressures of liquid A and liquid B in their pure state. Now we mix both this liquid and we will get a mixture like of A and B. This is a mixture of A and B. So this mixture will be the liquid liquid solution liquid A and liquid B. At a certain temperature since both these liquids are volatile it will undergo vaporization. Okay. And a stage where equilibrium is established, these components will exert some vapor pressure on the liquid surface. Suppose these vapor pressures of these components are P A and P B. These vapor pressures of the components A and B, these two liquids are different from their pure state, vapor pressure in their pure state. And you consider here the mole fraction of component A in the solution state is XA and XP. These are what? These are mole fractions of component A and B. And in the vapor state, suppose the mole fraction of A is YA and mole fraction of B is YB. So in case of mixture, According to the Rouse law, what is stated that the vapor pressure exerted by the component by a component in mixture is equal to the vapor pressure of this component in their pure state that is P A naught into mole fraction of this component in the solution phase that is X A. So this is the Rouse law said. This is called Rouse law. Similarly, we can apply this Rouse law for the component B also. So therefore, the vapor pressure of the component B in the mixture or solution state will be equal to the vapor pressure of the component B in their pure solvent state into more fraction of the component in the solution phase okay suppose this is number one and number two equation now the total vapor pressure in the mixture will be p a plus p b so this is 
so we can write the value of pa and pv as pa not into x a and pv not into x b if we substitute the value of x a 1 minus x b pv not x b so it will come out as p a not plus x b p b not x a so this is the total pressure of the total vapor pressure of the mixture in all the equations you see in all the equation equation 1 2 and 3 these are the equations of Raoult's law okay regarding vapor pressure of a solution you see the p a naught and p b naught this value are constant this value are constant for a specific solvent so the vapor pressure of the component would be a function of the mole fraction of the component in the solution phase so there would be a there could be a graph between p a versus x a similarly for others as well now consider the mole fraction of the component in the vapor phase in this case for vapor phase we can use the delta's law whatever we discuss in the gaseous state in first year chemistry that delta's law can be used in case of vapor state So, so if we consider the gaseous phase here in this case this gaseous phase for this gaseous phase we can use the Dalton's law of partial pressure here P A is the partial pressure of component A and P B is the partial pressure of component B in the gaseous phase and P T is the total pressure of the this gaseous phase so we can use in this case the Dalton's law of partial pressure it is I think it is already discussed in the class 11 chapter gaseous state chapter so according to this Dalton's law PT is equal to total pressure equal to P A plus P B and P A in the in the gaseous phase can be written as mole fraction of the component Y B in the gaseous phase into total pressure of the gaseous phase whereas P B can be written as Y B and total pressure of the gaseous phase these three equations we can get from gaseous phase okay so in case of liquid phase we can use Raoult's law and in case of gaseous phase we can use Dalton's law of partial pressure okay these two things you should remember now let us discuss about the graph of vapor pressure of mole fraction versus mole fraction from the Rao's law of a mixture of solution liquid liquid solution you see what we have got the pressure of vapor pressure of component a is a function of mole fraction a vapor pressure of component b is a function of component mole fraction of component b so there would be a linear straight line for this equation so we can have a graph like this vapor pressure and mole fraction okay so if we consider here mole fraction of component a is 1 then partial pressure of component a would be equal to p a naught okay and if we consider mole fraction of component B is 0 then P A would be also 0 
so if we plot this is as a vapor pressure this is as a mole fraction of a then we can have if we x a equal to 1 then the partial pressure of vapor pressure p a would be maximum value of p a naught so if we decreases the mole fraction up to x a equal to 0 then this p a becomes 0 that this is the p a okay that is equal to 0 so graph is somewhat like this okay with decreasing the vapor pressure the vapor with decreasing the mole fraction the vapor pressure also decreases so in this case when mole fraction of x a of component a is 1 then x b would be 0 and x a when x a is 0 then x b is 1 okay so at this point when x b is 0 then vapor pressure of component b would be 0 when x b is 1 then component of b have a vapor pressure like p b naught okay so in this point the vapor pressure of component b would be 0 and at this point it will have a maximum value p b naught okay this is the point so if we join these two points then we will get a straight line this is the vapor pressure versus mole fraction of component b graph okay so if we see the total pressure this is the total pressure equation okay p a plus p b so p a plus p b this graph would be like if we add this two point then we will got the p t p a plus p b graph so this is the graph of vapor process versus mole fraction for liquid liquid solution it's about vapor pressure of second type of solution that is a solution of a solid in a liquid solution in this case solid is the solute and liquid it is the solvent part of the solution okay along with that there is a condition in such solution the solid in this case it is non-volatile you should remember this it is non-volatile that is it cannot go into a vapor state but the solvent it is here it is volatile okay so you see if you have a liquid which is volatile that can it can undergo in vapor it will produce some vapor pressure over the liquid surface okay so this is the solvent so if we in this case you see all the surface molecule it is here is occupied by the solvent molecule but if we add some solid here non-volatile solute then we'll have a solution where some of the molecule on the surface is occupied by the solute molecule solid solute molecule okay so number of molecules of the solvent on the surface of the solution is decreases it is the solvent plus non-volatile solute what i have said that on addition of a non-volatile solute the number of solvent molecule on the surface of the solution is decreases because some of the uh, position here is occupied by the non-volatile solute particle therefore the probability of going the solvent molecule on to in the vapor state is also decreases since there is less number of molecule that can undergo vapor state from the solvent part therefore the vapor pressure also here 
decreases. So vapor pressure here decreases. So we can say that on addition of a non-volatile solid, solid solute in a solvent, volatile solvent, the vapor pressure of the solvent is generally decreases. Okay, this is called lowering of vapor pressure. So in this case, if we consider this is a solvent A, and in this case, it is vapor pressure is P A naught in the pure state. And if you consider, if you consider the vapor pressure of the solvent component in the solution phase is P A, then we can write according to the Rouse law, according to Rouse law, that vapor pressure of component A, the volatile component A, is equal to the P A naught, the vapor pressure of the component in pure state, okay, into mole fraction of that component of that component in the solution phase, okay. This is the Rouse law. You see, in this case, all the vapor pressure here is exerted is contributed from the solvent part only okay solvent component only so vapor pressure in this case the vapor pressure of solution if we write ps is the vapor pressure of the solution it can be written as pa that is the vapor pressure of the solvent okay this is the vapor pressure of solvent and it is vapor pressure of solution solution okay in this case we can write p s equal to p a naught x a it can also be written as p s divided by p a naught equal to mole fraction of the component this is the mole fraction of solvent. So if we consider if it is N1 is the number of moles of solute and N2 is the number of moles of solvent, then we can write in place of XA it is the mole fraction of solvent therefore we can write n2 divided by n1 plus n2 So what we have got that vapor pressure of the solution divided by vapor pressure of the pure solvent is equal to the mole fraction of the solvent. If we here did 1 minus from both the side then we will get that P A naught divided by P S P A naught is equal to n1 into n2 okay this part the numerator part it is called lowering of vapor pressure the denominator part uh, numerator part sorry and this is it is the mole fraction of solute in the solution 
okay and now this complete part this on the left side it is called as relative lowering of vapor pressure it is equal to the mole fraction of solute okay this we keep in a box this is very important so what we have got from this discussion that the for a solution where solute is solid non volatile solid and solvent is liquid volatile liquid okay for such solution the relative lowering of vapor pressure in this case the so in case of solution the vapor pressure is decreases and relative lowering of vapor pressure is equal to the mole fraction of the solute in the solution so this is it for the today's class student if you have any doubt you can ask me on the comment section below in the next class i will discuss about some problems or i either i will give you some assignment based on these things that i have discussed so if you have any doubt you can ask me so if you are new to this channel you can subscribe our channel and press the bell icon so that you can get the notification from our channel so thank you guys